Andrea Tessman. Yes, Kirk Buckner. I hate you. I know that. Yeah. Uh, Brad, do you hate me? No, I love musicals. This is like a musical. <laughs> so Andrea has picked a whole new world. And for those who want to roast me, and probably just me, look, let me just sort of like say, oh, I've got a dog with a squeaky toy, but that's okay. Uh, let me just say this. I get completely why this was a hit. And it should have been. It's just not my kind of hit. Oh, it had all the ingredients of a hit song, Cake. Entirely right. constructed, built to be a hit song, Cake. Yes, it, it's, well, if we're going to go with the cake genre, let's just call it fruit cake. I know what makes a fruit cake. <laughs> I know what you put in a fruit cake, but I don't like to eat it. But <laughs> I know people who like to eat a fruit cake. I enjoy fruitcake. I would say fruitcake is much more complex than this. This song is more slab cake with some blue rosettes on it. We didn't even say what song it was, though. <laughs> we did. A whole yes. new world. Well, I'm a assuming, I'm also world. assuming that a lot of the people who clicked on this read what it said. Mm, you never know. You're well, giving people I've a lot of credit. I've ended up in some weird YouTube holes in my life that I didn't purposely click on so and, and right before uh, brad and i were watching a hole <laughs> if, if someone wants to one of the two of you want to um, so that. when i turned my video on my dog was sitting on the couch uh licking her butt that that is what she does she's a dog yeah. and we got front was... row seats to watch yeah. opal do laundry yep so that, yeah. that is what Brad is referencing. They got to see my, I don't think they even saw the dog's butthole because it's very furry and her. It's too dark to we'll, really we'll make just, anything let's out. Let's just move along from that whole discussion. All right. So from furry dog assholes, we're looking at Aladdin. I don't know if that's the cleanest segue I've ever done, but it's going to have to be. And Andrea said I had homework. I had to watch this movie. I've never seen Aladdin. Now I know there's a second thing I'm probably insulting people like, but the mean you haven't seen Aladdin. Well, I've never seen Aladdin. I'm not really- Dude, it was, it, even if you don't watch it for anything else, Robin Williams does amazing voiceover work in that. So, and so, here, so much yeah. of it was ad lib. So here's what I did do. I found the super cut of just Robin Williams. <laughs> <laughs> but then then you miss out on one of my favorite impressions ever well if the other one was sort of i, I watched the gilbert godfrey supercut too yeah the gilbert godfrey one <laughs> i'm gonna step back from the microphone a little bit here because i can't do gilbert godfrey quiet but who can look at me i'm so upset i'm molting <laughs> gilbert godfrey is one of brad's favorite impressions it's just He'll do anything in Gilbert Gottfried voice if you just ask him. Pretty much. Can I do an impression that has nothing yes. to do with anything? Okay. C celebrity magician from the 70s, Doug Henning. Right. If everything is wonderful in the world of magic. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> All right, back back to Aladdin. Um, Fuck you both. <laughs> <laughs> Nail that. So Aladdin, Aladdin is probably what the second in that Disney Renaissance. Renaissance. Yeah. So the first one being The Little Mermaid. Mm -hmm. Um, the second being Aladdin. The Little Mermaid did extremely well musically, but never hit the pop charts. Well, they didn't try. Oh, they no, I missed one. Beauty and the Beast hmm. came before Aladdin, I believe. Which did hit the pop chart. Yes, it did. Because yeah. uh, this, this, crew, this was also back-to-back -back Oscar winners. Yes. And Beauty and the... So what happened was um, The Little Mermaid did really, really well musically, but adults didn't want... Uh, it, it just didn't gain traction on the pop charts because... It was songs from an animated movie directed towards children. Mm -hmm. So what they did with Beauty and the Beast was they took the big romantic um, song 
And then they removed it from the movie, produced it as its own standalone single with Celine Dion and... And specifically, we're talking about the, the title song. Yes, the title song. Okay, Beauty and the Beast. And it charted at, I believe they broke the top 10. I want to say number eight, because I was looking at that myself. Something like that, yeah. yeah. So you've now got Celine Dion and what's the guy from the song? Plebo? Plebo Bryson. Plebo. Uh, Plebo is actually uh, quite the legend himself in his own way, in his own right. He is. Uh, yes, he absolutely is. Yeah. Uh, big big uh, factor in the flight oh. swarm genre, or is, I, or is pretty much what it really is, music to fuck to. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, at the end of Aladdin, Peebo Bryson and um, Regina Bell, Regina Bell do Beauty and the Beast as well for the end credits, and well, there's a video for it as well. But that is that is the song that made it to number one. It is not. It is, it is not the movie recording of exactly. this song. That's well, right. So, See, that's what I didn't know because I, I, again, I never saw the movie. I did watch, you know, for the for the song part. I mean, like dumb ass me. I didn't realize that up until recently that they were making other versions of that with more established uh, performers, mm -hmm. which is why they did that. Cause it was the guy who actually sang it in the film. I never even heard of him. I, I certainly was familiar with Leah Salonga. Brad Kane. Um, Brad, Brad, Kane. Kane. Brad Kane has done very well on Broadway himself. They were both teenagers. They were both kids. Mm -hmm. And it's why the song worked beautifully well to convey this amazement of these these kids breaking free of their respective prisons so aladdin had the prison of poverty and jasmine had the prison of privilege expectations and privilege and they were exploring a whole new world and they had this youthful intonation and it was a really great song. Yeah, it was it was very well done. Like the reason why that song, exactly what you said there, Andrea, that song sticks with you is because they are uh, breathless throughout the song. They are you get that that you can hear the wonderment in the voices, um, and it's it's why that show, that whole you know we make fun of it. I can show you the world, and you know it is shining, shimmering, splendid. Exactly, it's very it's, musical it's, theater. It's maudlin. It's over the top. It is, but it sticks with you. And monsters like Kirk don't like that. <laughs> <laughs> but, no, I, okay, okay, but it hits both of my nerves. Sappy <laughs> maudlin shit. And show tune shit. Oh, <laughs> see, and I'm a sucker for all of that. Oh yeah, give it to me, absolutely. So that that stands in pretty stark contrast to the song that actually made it to number one, which is the overproduced R and B adult contemporary. The only thing that that video starring. was missing was some ground fog. Yeah, <laughs> except it's the desert, so there's no fog. It but should have been just for just you've for now got stuff. you've now got two R and B sex music artists <laughs> creating. Older re too. I was gonna say they are now. Yeah. They're. I mean, Pivo was 41, I believe. Oh, ancient. Mm. Not a teenager. Very yeah. different tone of voice. Yes. Um. And then, um, yeah, but if Peebo oh. dated, well, if Peebo dated Jasmine, I mean, like this would not be a very good song. Well, Belle was about ten years younger, I believe. She would have been in her early thirties. Forty-one, thirty-one, she... competitive football score. That's okay. <laughs> but there's there's nothing wrong with that. But she um, she has a very um, gospel, classically trained voice. Mm -hmm. She has a beautiful voice, but is very much a strong black woman's voice. It's a totally different song. It doesn't sound the same. It doesn't have the same quality. It was entirely mass produced for radio consumption. Hey, but it worked. I mean, it went to number one. Well. It, yeah. And honestly, I think that was because of the arrangement uh, Alan Merkin was an amazing uh, arranger, and he's done plenty for Disney. Uh, Tim Rice was along for the ride there because Alan Merkin's partner, whose name I, I can't remember right now, 
Uh, he passed while they were uh, working on this. Tim Rice stepped in and wrote the lyrics for it. And he had also worked with, uh, Tim Rice had worked with Andrew Lloyd Webber. Uh, they had done... Well, he um, went on to do uh, The Lion King with Elton John. Yes, and he was actually and he working. Also did he was, Beauty and the Beast before too. No, he didn't do Beauty and the Beast. He worked on Beauty and the Beast. Then it was at, then Beauty and the Beast was after, and we're getting oh, our time. Was this his first Disney venture? This was his first Disney venture, though he was working on The Lion King at the same time, oh. which is why he got pulled over to do this. But it was this was the first one that was released. He's very prolific, so. Anyway, like I, like I was saying in the intro there, I mean, this thing has all the hallmarks of a Disney hit song. Yeah, it really does. And it, it does it has it was, that because of the architecture, I think. And it was the beginning of Disney realizing that, I mean, Disney played off of the emotion and the, the great, yeah, just joy, sheer joy and emotion in what they were pablum feeding us. Did, I mean, did they ever release, uh, sorry to interrupt, but I'm just curious here. Uh, did they ever release the other version as a single? Which other version? The well, actual- Lisa manga and uh, I forget. I don't like, believe, uh, Brad, yeah. I don't, I don't believe so. it was released as a single. I they believe they, they it was just- They never had any even do it then. No. Well, so- you can look at this. So there was there was that decade of Disney Renaissance, the nineties. Yeah, that, yeah. That had so yeah. There was Aladdin. There was Beauty and the Beast. There was um, the Lion King. Oh, see, with, I just looked it up. Lion King was ninety four, and mm-hmm. um, uh, Aladdin was um, nineteen ninety one, ninety two. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so he did work on Lion King after um, Tim Rice. Yes. Yeah, Tim Rice. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, was because after. he was he was currently he was working on the Lion King. Right. And he then got Beauty. pulled over to do Aladdin, and then he went back, and they finished the Lion King. Yes, Beauty and the Beast was ninety one. So here's a bit of interesting things here for that. Uh, so it knocked off. Uh, do you know what knocked off the charts at number one? Yes, Whitney Houston. Mm-hmm. And also beat Whitney for the Oscar. Mm-hmm. From yeah. the bodyguard. I am yeah, not two. upset about that. I don't know that I really have a dog in that fight when it comes down to that. Usually I find the, the winners for the original song usually crap. Hmm. Uh, with Whitney, though, I mean, 14 weeks she sat at number one with I Will Always Love You. And it was a much better song when Dolly did it, as far as I'm concerned. Um, and it's nothing against Whitney. I, I had her, what was it, her second album, I think it was. Um, I Want to Dance with Somebody and what have you was on there. And I think she was less of a diva then. Maybe. Maybe that's just my own perspective. But to to have Whitney dethroned on on that one, 14 weeks of I Will Always Love You is more than enough. It was overkill. I certainly remember that very, very well. Uh, that would have been my college days. My ma- main memories of this song is, oh, it's on, I'm turning the station. Like, I, this is just not my jam. Mm-hmm. I tried to find every any angle I could. So I went the Oscar route. <laughs> so... Yeah, it's basically, I mean, it was mass produced for, to become a hit. There's the, it's, it's not the same song as the movie. It was created specifically as a, hey, we know this song is great. Now we're going to change it to appeal to the pop charts. Mm-hmm. Um, it was a time when adult contemporary kind of merged with the pop charts really nicely um which it doesn't do so much these days and um it oh, kind it of killed people's career off, though. well i was gonna say it kicked off an era of disney making a secondary version of their song by a pop star to um to be a hit and Essentially, that backfired on them in later years when they started just 
hiring the hit makers to be the voice actors. Um, mm. Frozen being the yep. example, um, Demi Lovato did a cover of Let It Go and it didn't chart at all, but the original by um, Idina Menzel made it to number five. Mm -hmm. So we wouldn't have Tra Travolta here to sort of like uh, introduce uh, that. Fun fact while I was going over this, um, this is the only Disney number one song up until we don't up talk about Bruno. Up until now. We, yeah. we won't talk about Bruno just we yet. We don't talk about Bruno. No, 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 no. I still haven't seen Encanto yet. I should. It is. But I, I am, don't I'm, know that I'm willing to cry by myself in my apartment. I'm low-key obsessed with Encanto right now, and it is definitely worthwhile watching. Uh, am I it might cry, make though? you cry, but it's uplifting at the same time. Uh, like, not a lot of crying. Just, some, like heartwarming could tears. i get like a solitary manly tear and then yes. say that i cry okay yeah, there's that's that's one such thing as a solitary manly tear there's there just <laughs> men <laughs> kicked in the balls do not go together they do not you ever been kicked in the balls i no well no? Wait a okay <laughs> well when you get to canada let me know and i'll show you that single solitary manly tear after i punt you in the in the gonads might be a tear it's not gonna be manly <laughs> does that uh, yeah i want to look at Peebo if we could this yeah. I, I actually was going through that, that i was really focusing on on his on some of the stuff that i've forgotten about uh if ever you're in my i can't sing so Arms again thank you i swear i love you much better uh, just a lot of the great stuff that he did in the 80s and late 70s he's a forgotten player in, in a lot of music. And that's, I, I, it's not really hard to see why. Uh, oh yeah. Everybody goes to Luther Vandross for your baby making music, but Peebo was, was putting down those hits too. Right. But a lot of that just sort of blend together with other things. And it's kind of a shame because I also too, I read that he went bankrupt. Oh, which is unfortunate. He did. So, he apparently yeah. had um, a bunch of stuff repossessed, including two Grammys. Including this Grammy. Ouch. Yeah, that's got to hurt. It was bought uh, by his friends, or I forget who it was, who bought it back for him. So oh. he, he did have that uh, eventually. So it, it's, uh, I, I wonder, and I, I couldn't find whether he was just sort of a victim of this success, because I think once you sort of like cross- an interesting Disney threshold. I mean, when you're Elton John later, it doesn't matter. You're Elton. You can do anything. Oh, yeah. That would have been like a Elton David Bowie John was Elton John Disney. before Disney. Right. Oh, yeah. Same with if, Celine Dion. If, if David Bowie did some work on a Disney soundtrack, he would still be David Bowie. He just has some extra Disney money. Well, I mean, to, in theory, I mean, you could say that he did something similar in Labyrinth. Absolutely. But that did not... I, I'd be happy to watch uh, David Bowie's um, Balls as he's... That Labyrinth. movie actually didn't star <laughs> David Bowie as top billing. It was David Bowie's package with David Bowie. I was talking about the glass I balls wasn't. that he's playing with. I saw, I saw that. I saw that movie, and I was traumatized <laughs> as a child because I'm like, "What is he keeping barbecue down there? Because that's a sausage." That would explain how the whole he salami. <laughs> was impressive is what it was i mean he aspired to david bowie heights well that's why mick jagger never kicked him out of bed that might be it <laughs> <laughs> i always thought that song should have been renamed dancing in the sheets <laughs> dun, 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 dun. oh my god <laughs> so i guess uh, that's the other thing too uh, I, I think with Peebo, it was really hard for him to sort of like maintain something after that. I don't know if you, you, he loses his audience to say, but also to Quiet Storm had pretty much run its course. And he we was, he was at the tail that. end of it. Yeah. When yeah. he was doing Disney stuff there, he was at the tail end of his career, man. He was 70s, 80s, and yeah. he was putting out the occasional uh, radio friendly bit, you know, and, and some of it made it and some of it didn't. Mm -hmm. But, you know, he was, he was never A list. Um, no. So when he brought on to Disney, that was that was his swan song. So I'm sure he didn't really, you know, didn't know at the time. 
No, he, he might not have known mm-hmm. that. He might have thought he could ride that out for another couple albums. Yeah, and I, I just don't think it just lent to... Yeah, he could do it. He could keep doing that over and over if they hired him. Yeah, and I don't know yeah. why they didn't, but, you know, that's, well, that's the way it worked repeat? out. Well, you guys would know better, far better than I. Do they repeat with their performers? I don't well, think so, do they? It, no, yeah, they did, because Peebo did um, Beauty and the Beast with Celine Dion. He did, that's right. Okay. All right, so then afterwards, like, don't they usually have... So they don't necessarily repeat the um, the voice actors, but Peebo wasn't a voice actor. He just did the um, mm-hmm. the remake of the song. Okay, cool. Uh, so do we have any other final thoughts before I tell you what shit sandwich I got for you? Yes, I want to say that I think we should all live our life by Disney standards. If you're Al- Aladdin and you want the girl, you lie. If you're Beast and you want the girl, you take her captive for a few weeks or months or whatever and eventually break her spirit and she loves you. And if you are the Little Mermaid, Ariel, you basically change yourself completely to get the man of your dreams. And I think there are lessons to be taken from all of those movies. I've tried the first two. Also, having a dead mother helps. If you're Sleeping Beauty, then um, live in a cabin with seven dudes? Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Oh, wait, wait, no, just let some random stranger kiss you when you're passed out. Yeah, that's it. Yes. Well, what else are the, what else are you supposed to do when they're passed out? <laughs> well, it's not like she could fight back. So, a random dude should probably have maybe you know looked into it a little bit further. Maybe waited for her to wake up, gotten consent. Mm-hmm. Um... Also, um, men with foot fetishes and uh, glass slippers can just go knocking on doors and putting them on strangers' feet and then marrying that person. Hmm. There are many well, if you have lessons. money and a yeah. foot fetish, sure. Yeah. Okay, so Quentin Tarantino <laughs> <laughs> could go door to door. Oh, dear God. <laughs> I think it would more be like, does this hypodermic needle fit? No, nobody ever injected anybody. Not in a Disney it movie. Pulp Fiction. Not in, a, not in a Disney movie. Disney oh. Pulp Fiction would be interesting. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Huh. Mm-hmm. So, I think, as aside from currently, where... We might talk about Bruno in the future. This was the first and only Disney movie to make it to number one. We and I'm okay if this is the last one. No, Bruno Damn. made it. Here's your punishment. Oh, hit it. Oh, right. okay. Hit me. Hit me. It's a Canadian. Uh oh. That's not. Oh, we're doing Nickelback. No. Okay, good. No, because that's punishment to me. <laughs> <laughs> We're going back to 1974 and a song about dying. We had joy. We had we fun. Had fun. We, we had fun. We had seasons, seasons in, in the, the sun. sun. Uh-huh. Actually, that's not that bad punishment. You've done no. worse to me. Yeah, we've no. done disco. We did. We we did my dingling. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> My favorite part of that is when, some, when somebody, I, I walk by somebody, oh, well, what are you doing tonight? Well, I'm talking about my ding a Talking about my <laughs> ding yes. That was your choice too, Kirk. That was my choice. Mm-hmm. So Kirk. Yeah. Kirk, why didn't you tell me about the book you wrote? Oh, I wrote a book. Did you write a book? I wrote a book. You can get that. It's on Amazon. It's Chavo Guerrero, instant classic, all about the late, great Chavo Guerrero Sr. He wrote it. Well, I wrote it. I helped him write it. It was a collaborative effort. Check it out. I'm very proud of that. Also, there's going to be some more shows. You might like this one, the two of you. Uh, Chris Borda and I, we are, Are You Hot episode is now up. But now, this Saturday, we're going to be recording I Made Him Watch the Beachcombers. Oh. Nice. Yes. So it, it is. It doesn't translate well into today. Well, it doesn't translate at all, especially if you, considering he's American. So yeah. that's the whole point. He never heard of this shit. <laughs> So Even that, like, this crap going back and watching television. those old shows, man, you know, I, I tried, like, I have a lot of affinity for, like, racing into the living room when I heard the Dukes of Hazard theme song come on, or um, uh, The Littlest Hobo and stuff like that, and you go back and try to watch that stuff, 
it doesn't work anymore, man. That's really our whole thing. It's like, that's why we call it. This crap was on national television. The only difference is usually we look at an American crap. Uh, I thought we'd sort of educate our listeners to the crap that we had to watch as Canadians. And it was low budget crap. Oh, yeah. Amazingly, our most successful show, I think, still to this day. It could be. I don't know. You get that. You get the log driver's waltz song and you got the house hippo. And they go whirling down and round down white water. water. Yeah. But the house hippo, hippo is classic. You <laughs> cannot take the house hippo away from me. <laughs> you can't take that away from me. Well, what Americans I do have left uh, listening. Here's what else we do. <laughs> <laughs> Evan Nolan and I, we are the hosts of the Hall of Fame show where we look at, hey, Halls of Fame. Sometimes I say some stuff controversial. Tune in ne next time where I'm going to say why women's hockey, again, has no business in the Olympics. Even though I've watched a ton hey. of it. Oh, no. Oh, yes. Kirk, go fuck yourself. Okay. With a cactus. <laughs> in um, the most unpleasant way possible, like possibly attached to a slow spinning drill. <laughs> I will defend this argument and that's okay. You don't have to agree with me. And don't forget to like and subscribe and add comments wherever the little yeah. things are. All, all the things. Also, yeah. uh, we may argue about women's hockey for a while. Um, Let's. I've already told you my point. Traditionally, they do better than men's hockey. So, uh, who does? The Canadian women's team. Doesn't matter. It doesn't ma it's, I'm mm -hmm. not saying that they're not awesome, I'm saying okay. they belong. So can you tell He's me? He's just Kirk, saying that there's not enough subscribers to women's hockey that it should be. That's my point. Oh, we could have a whole nother argument about women's soccer because of the Canadian women's team that's paving the way for the Canadian men's team. Absolutely. That's a totally different show. That's I need to get my spice right, fine. I'll, dress I'll, on we'll because we're going to talk about girl I'll gladly talk about that offline and I can tell you why women's soccer does belong. Oh, okay. Anyway, yeah. let's go back to your shows and oh, my other shows because we're uh, totally off base. Yeah, uh, I do a bunch of other shows, and somehow I'm the center of all this. I am, I, I am the center of the shit smorgasbord. Oh, Marsha, Marsha, Marsha. Well, hey, someone's got to do it, and I just happen to be the one to think of it. So, if you're lo if you like everything that we do, but you don't like me, well, you're pretty much fucked. So, well, then you got us. Well, yeah. <laughs> nice all right and with that stay safe everyone wherever you are hope you're having a good time na 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 gonna have a good time hey 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 can we still do cosby no no no, no more cosby i don't think we do but we do na 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 na